Well, hello to you. Welcome to Word Studies. This is John Rhodes, Pastor Messenger Church, right here in Fenton, Missouri. So glad to have you a part of the Word Study. As always, I pray that over the next few minutes, I'll say something that will not only bless you, but will cause you to want to bless someone else by sharing what the Word of God says. Isn't that what this is all about? We should all be witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving him glory and thanksgiving, letting people know just how great and good God is that ministers to us every single day of our life. God is such a good God, and I want you to know that. And I want you to know that in his word, everything you need, everything you need to know is right here in the word of God. That's why on Wednesday nights here at Messenger Church at 7 o'clock, I do what we call Word Studies with Pastor, various subjects that uh, I, I discuss. Tonight, I start a brand new series on words. Have you ever in your lifetime seen such a time as we're living in now where people are throwing words out without consideration of what's coming out of their mouth? Never have I s seen people call names, accuse people without regard as to whether it's truth or not. Just words going in every direction. For the child of God, that is not acceptable. And tonight, I take you into God's word and I'll show you the benefit of words. I'll show you the power of words. So that's at seven o'clock tonight. We'll be discussing that on our word study broadcast next Wednesday. But if you'd like to come and be with us, please feel free to do so. No doubt in my mind, you will be blessed by God's word. And of course, there's always a service for the children and for the teens, for the whole family can be involved in the Wednesday night word studies. Just about an hour. That's all we take. All right. And uh, we try to consider people's time, but always, always under subjection to the Holy Spirit and what he has to say. Let's get into our study. Let's get into our study. All right. I have been ministering on the subject of weight with a subtitle of the last couple of Wednesdays called It Is Worth the Weight. Now, I've said this already a time or two, but let me say it again. Waiting is not not always easy, but it's often necessary. Did you get that? It's not always easy to wait, especially when you feel like you need it right then, right there. It's not easy to wait for it. And yet the Lord said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Renewal takes place for the person that waits. And let me tell you something, friend, if you go all the way back to the beginning of this, all the way back to Adam, all the way back to the sinning, all the way back to the failure of man in obeying God and the loss that was experienced from that point on, when a promise was given that our heel would bruise the head of Satan, we've been waiting for something. Mankind has been waiting. And, and what I'm saying now is it's worth the wait. What God has given to us, what God has made available for us has been worth the wait. And I want you to know right now, maybe you're needing something in your life. Maybe you've been asking God to move in your heart and move in your life in a special way. There's something specific that you have been seeking God for, a specific direction you've been asking God about. Well, I want you to know, it may not have happened in your time frame. Isn't that the way it usually is? It may not happen exactly the way you've wanted it to happen, but it'll be worth it. The wait will be worth it. Now, what I'm endeavoring to do now is to show you the benefits of the wait. All right. And the first thing we took note of is redemption. Redemption. I talked about that last week where we had to wait for the birth of Christ, the crucifixion of Christ, the resurrection, 
the ascension, all right, him sitting down at the right hand of the Father, becoming the intercessor, the advocate with the Father for you and I, and, and, and pay him the price eternally, eternally, according to Hebrews 9 and 12, that sacrifice he gave was permanent, and therefore the salvation of every child of God is a permanent work. Jesus saved you for you to stay saved. Now, we go into the next element and the next benefit of weight. And, and, and it's something that you don't hear a lot about. You don't hear a lot about, preached about or talked about, but I'm going to talk about it. Praise God, the benefit of the weight has been justification. Now, now you say, what does that mean? I, I don't think I've ever heard people talk about being justified. Well, if you're a student of the word of God, you've heard it because it's throughout God's word. The word justification is the act by which God, notice that, God moves a willing person from the state of sin, from the state of injustice, to the state of grace, to the state of justice, all right? Isn't that beautiful? Justification is when God moves, and here's an important part, a willing person. You cannot become a child of God without being willing. It's not going to happen because your parents were Christians, your grandparents were Christians. You say, but pastor, my dad was a preacher. My mama was a tremendous saint in, in, in the church. That's well and good. But unless you're willing, you're willing to turn your life over to, the, over to Christ, then there's no benefit as far as salvation or justification. You've got to be willing, all right, all right, to move from that state of sin through repentance to the state of grace, which is God's favor, all right? You have to be willing. It's they that call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that shall be saved. You're not going to be saved because you're a good person. There's a lot of good people that's going to miss heaven because they've not been taught that for you to be born again, you must be born of the blood and the water of Jesus Christ's blood. And you've got to repent. You've got to ask forgiveness of your sins. And then you're justified. Now, uh, 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 another definition of justification is the change in a person's condition, moving from a state of sin to a state of righteousness. Now, this is where this thing has gotten distorted in the modern day church. People are not being taught that when you give your life to Jesus, you become a new creature. Your desires change, your wants change change as you began to grow in love to him. And, and we're not being told that. People uh, have been given the idea, which I think is idiotic, excuse the vernacular, kind of common, but they've, they've been told, just come up, read off of a card and everything's all right. Go about your business, folks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Repentance means to turn and go the other way. In other words, the way you were going before Jesus was the way of sin and the sinner. When you repent of your sins, you turn and you go the other way. You start going God's way, doing God's will. Not man, 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 and doing his thing is never going to help you. So to be justified, all right, is that you move from a condition of sin to a, to a state of righteousness. Righteousness simply means right standing with God. Isn't that wonderful? It, 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 it Basically, it is God's declaration that a sinner is righteous through the work and the words of Jesus Christ. All right, here it is, Romans 5 and 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so place in Faith in Jesus, faith in the power of the blood, faith in repentance, faith in redemption, faith in the, in, in, in the strength of the blood that produces justification, moving from unrighteousness to righteousness is what produces a justified person. And that is worth waiting for because without that justification, there is no relationship with God. All right? 
The next thing I want to point out to you is not only was the weight worth or justif justification worth the weight, so was purification. Purification slash sanctification. This is something else. People don't teach it. People don't talk about it. You know, you get saved, show up at church once on Sunday morning, everything's all right. Don't worry about God for the rest of the week. Now they're teaching, all right, oh, you're covered by grace. You can go out and live any way you want to. Now, this may sound kind of common and it may sound kind of simplistic, but just think about it. If you were committing sin prior to repentance and that sin was sending you to hell, and you gave your heart to Jesus, all right? And you went right back to that same old cesspool, okay? Now, when you gave your heart to Jesus, it was by grace. You began to operate in God's favor, in God's grace. I accept that. But if you go right back to that same old cesspool and live in it, committing those same sins, do you really think that because God, uh, through grace, saved you, yet you're doing the same stuff you've always done and you're using grace as an excuse to do it? Isn't that kind of silly? I, I really think it is. You say, but, but that's what my pastor, that's what my favorite preacher. Let me tell you something, folks. Get in the word of God for yourself. And please don't be a pick and choose person. Don't just pick the part that makes your flesh feel good. Pick the part that tells you you got to quit doing certain things, quit going certain places. Quit living to please yourself. You've got to start living to please God. You say, Pastor, that kind of teaching and preaching is not going to build your church. Let me tell you something. It'll build the kingdom of God. Isn't that what this is really all about anyhow? Somebody that's really hungry for God won't sit around talking about what they had to give up and what they had to get rid of. Somebody that really gives their heart to God starts talking about what they fell in love with with how great and how good God is, you see. And so we come to this point of purification and, and sanctification. The sanctified means to be set apart for a special use of person or purpose. In other words, God has a purpose for you, but God can only use the sanctified church, sanctified person, the person set apart for that. Because if you're set apart, you're set apart with and by meeting biblical conditions, all right? You have began to walk according to the word of God. This is God's transformation of the believer, his whole being. That is the mind, will, his behaviors, and his affections through the work of the Holy Spirit. That's what sanctification is, all right? Now notice this, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. I don't care what label you have placed on you or someone else has placed on you. If you're doing all that junk or any of it, <clears throat> you're going to miss heaven. You are not going to be a part of the kingdom of God. Oh, I don't want to hear that. I, I, I'm not going to listen to you anymore. All, you've, all you're saying is you don't believe in the word of God because I, I've done nothing but read you God's word. And all of this is what comes after Jesus, the wait. Man waited for it. Now we're trying to get rid of it. Not me, not me, not me. I want to please God. Am I a perfect person? Never said I was. Do I do everything right? Never said I did. All my decisions in line with the perfect will of God, I pray they are, but I may skip a beat every now and then. But you know what? God has put speed bumps in my life. He's put things in my life to slow me down where I'll take time to think about it, pray about it, dwell on it, where I can get myself back in line with what thus saith God. Now, the last thing worth waiting for is empowerment. Acts 1 and 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you'll become a witness. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Now, we have no problem 
saying, okay, I'm going to witness to Jerusalem. That's those right around us, Judea, those, those within our own region. But Samaria, that's different. Holy Spirit one day talked to me and said, you need to pay attention to that. He said, you don't have a problem witnessing to people of like look or posture or color or whatever. People you're on familiar ground with, but what about your enemies? What about your enemies? Samaria was the enemy of the Jew. And he said, when that power comes on you, all these walls of prejudice, all these walls are going to come down. And when God's power starts operating, you'll knock on any door, go to any man, any woman, no matter who they are, no matter what their history is, and you'll start telling them about Jesus. That power was worth the wait. Isn't God good? I pray that this has touched you, moved you, and helped you. It's worth the wait. Everything God is doing now, he's doing because somebody before us sowed the seed, watered it. Now we're reaping the benefit. Never think, never think you're getting what you, you've got because you're such a good person. Somebody else sowed the seed. Somebody else watered the ground. Don't take it for granted. You make sure you're sowing good seed and watering it. God love you. God bless you. Tune in with me again next week. We're going into the study of words. I love you. You're blessed.